The peak of Pennsylvania severe weather season is not until midsummer, but it can occur at any time of the year. That's right, and in order for severe weather to materialize, a few important parameters need to be in place. By definition, a severe thunderstorm produces at least one of the following. Winds of 58 miles per hour or greater, hail at least one inch in diameter, or a tornado. But all thunderstorms, severe or not, rely on one main initial ingredient, instability. Really what that means specifically is two things. First is that temperatures got to decrease fairly rapidly with height. Second part of instability is high humidity in the lower part of the atmosphere. And the reason is, is that if you have high humidity, that means there's a lot of water vapor. When you lift air that has a lot of water vapor in it, you get a lot of condensation. Condensation gives off heat, and heat makes the rising air warmer than its surroundings, which gives it a lot of buoyancy. So when you look at thunderstorms, you see the, the bubbling clouds. People sometimes describe the clouds as looking like they're boiling. You know, that, that's buoyancy right before your eyes. So yeah, rapid decrease of temperature with height and high humidity down low. And then for severe storms, an ingredient you need in addition to the instability is wind shear, which is just the fancy term for a large variation of wind with altitude. The wind can blow from different directions, at different speeds, or a combination of both. And when it does, we start to worry about tornadoes. But before we talk about that, we need to think about basic physics. Tornado formation on its most fundamental level, it, it, it's really simple and it's something that's familiar to everybody who has a drain. It, it's, you watch the water go down the sink and the water as it converges on the drain spins faster and faster and makes a vortex. A similar example is that of a figure skater. They spin faster as their arms come closer to their body. The process that is occurring here is known as the principle of angular momentum conservation. Basically, as you bring fluid inward, or in the case of the figure skaters, the skater brings their arms inward, it spins faster. Tornado formation in the final stages is exactly the same thing. It abides by the same fundamental physics. The questions for tornado scientists are, what brings that air inward and, and where's that angular momentum come from initially? And that's when wind shear comes back into play. One source is wind shear in the environment. If there's variation of wind with height, that imparts horizontal spin. And that's a source of angular momentum, although the spin is oriented about a horizontal axis. Researchers also believe that changes in horizontal temperature play a key role. Where it's raining, it tends to be cooler than outside of the storm where it's warmer. And where you have cold next to warm, you've got heavy air next to lighter air. That also spins the air, which is another source of angular momentum. And then if the wind field is just right, you can take these various sources of angular momentum, reorient horizontal spin into vertical spin, and have it get transported to the ground, and voila, tornado, if a bunch of things go according to plan. But sometimes, things don't go according to plan. The reason that air can rise vertically to great altitudes to begin with is due to it being much warmer than its surroundings. However, rising plumes of air will often encounter a layer of the atmosphere that is just as warm or even warmer than they are. So that's effectively a quote-unquote cap. It, it, it can suppress thunderstorm formation. And Sometimes that cap is present and will suppress storms most of the day. Sometimes it suppresses storms entirely. You don't get storms everywhere where you have instability. Thankfully, actually, for, for all of society, you have a lot larger area with instability than where you actually have thunderstorms that develop. And, and partly that's because of this so-called cap. Forecast uncertainties on severe weather days often revolve around whether the cap can get weakened or removed. One way to remove a cap is the large-scale lifting of a thick layer of the atmosphere, something that approaching low-pressure systems and their attached fronts do effectively. As you lift air, air cools, so if the cap is defined to be this warm layer, if you lift the warm layer and you've now made the warm layer cooler, it's no longer a cap. So you remove the cap. Another way to remove the cap is simply to make the ground under the cap even hotter or even moister than before and then the air that's rising in that warm plume is just that much more warmer and juicier than before. It might just go right by the cap. One way to learn more about storms is by studying them directly. 
Many scientists in the severe storms community use a variety of instruments to collect data within and around storms. If you really want to know how the tornado forms, you really want to sample many cubic miles of atmosphere around the tornado rather than inside the tornado itself. And you want to do that sampling well before the tornado even, even forms. Most of this data collection occurs in places like the Great Plains or even in the lower Mississippi Valley. While these aren't the only regions where severe weather happens, their topography makes it much easier and safer to do this data collection than in any other parts of the country. Typically, special field observations are not collected around here, and it's not because the Northeast is viewed as unimportant or we know everything about the Northeast. It, it, it's really uh, just the very challenging logistics of it. Lots of trees and hills give you a lot of radar blockage. But just because it's hard to collect data here in the Keystone State doesn't mean that we can't experience severe storms. As if you get Kansas weather conditions in Pennsylvania, you'll get a Kansas type event here in Pennsylvania. So, um, and that occasionally happens. Like big tornado outbreaks like May 31st, 1985, you had essentially Great Plains like atmospheric conditions in Pennsylvania, and you got a Great Plains like outcome. On average, Pennsylvania experiences about 16 tornadoes per year and about 20 days with severe weather somewhere in the state. So it's good to be prepared before severe weather strikes. Go to weather.gov slash safety slash thunderstorm to learn more about how to keep you and your family safe. For Weather World, I'm Marissa Ferger. And I'm Ben Reppert.